This is the Pacific Ocean. Federal wildlife biologist Brian Collins stands on a narrow strip of beach just north of the U.S.-Mexico border. The salt water that comes in, yeah, we have a couple of snowy egrets hanging out waiting for the fish to come and go. This is where the infamous raw sewage flows find the ocean. But Collins says it's also a lifeline for the complex web of life in the estuary. This little river mouth feeds this entire wetland. This is the largest estuarine wetland left in Southern California. This narrow opening in the beach allows for an inland flow, bringing salt water to the marsh and mud flats that cover the valley floor. So this is a pinch point. It's kind of like your, your aorta. You know, you need that to stay open, to stay alive. This estuary needs this river mouth to stay open. The ocean flow keeps the oxygen levels up, and that helps sustain the delicate ecosystem that supports endangered species like the Ridgeway rail. That's a rare bird that only thrives in coastal muddy salt marshes. Their habitat is exceptionally green this summer because the estuary was flooded with nutrient-rich sewage. We learned the hard way how fast this system can go into that sort of condition given the, the types of inflows that we have. And we, actually, we have data on the inflows, so we know how much um, effluent that this system absorbed during that event. Biologists don't specifically measure sewage or contamination in this habitat, but they do track the estuary's vital signs. Researcher Jeff Crooks points at a post that sits on the edge of a channel where open water flows. It's one of several permanent monitoring stations. And you can look and see there's the little top hat thing that's a satellite uplink. So this is being uploaded and we can look at the data in real time. Just out of sight, a two foot long tube contains instruments that dip into the open water. Those instruments essentially take the pulse of the estuary. So that unit is sitting in there and every 15 minutes is measuring how warm the water it is, how salty it is, how cloudy it is. It's measuring water level. Really importantly, it's measuring how much oxygen is in the water. Plunging oxygen levels recently alerted biologists that there was a problem in the estuary. Sand had clogged the opening of the Tijuana River, stopping the intertidal exchange of water. Clearing that blockage gave the estuary a chance to recover. And Brian Collins says recovery is an ongoing battle here. I know that if we're smart and work with natural systems in ways that are science-based and intelligent and we continue to develop science and, and data from studying these systems, um, I know we can restore them. It's just a matter of us collectively choosing to invest the energy in them. The estuary ecosystem has proven to be resilient even as it deals with extraordinary challenges. There are ongoing battles against invasive species, trash, sediment, and those massive rain-driven renegade sewage flows. Just in the last three years, there were 300 sewage spills just in the canyons alone. That's one sewage spill every three days. Imperial Beach Mayor Serge Dedina got so frustrated this past winter that he's preparing to take the federal government to court. The city announced last month they intend to sue the International Boundary and Wastewater Commission. That's the federal agency responsible for cross-border sewage issues. The problem is they don't have money. So we need to get this in front of a federal judge in the U.S. Attorney's Office so they can actually sit down and force the IBWC to fix these egregious discharges of toxic waste and toxic sewage in the Tijuana River and in the canyons that are impacting our beach and the beach in Coronado. Dedina is urging other cities to join their legal effort. Coronado has discussed the possibility in at least two closed-door meetings. The Coronado mayor is directing his city council to consider, among other things, drafting a participation agreement with Imperial Beach. KPBS reached out to the San Diego City Attorney, Mara Elliott. Her office indicated they've been contacted about the Imperial Beach litigation. However, the city attorney isn't ready to make a recommendation to the mayor or city council. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.